And hey there, Facebook. Prophet David Taylor here from our weekly live prophetic word. Again, hello to my Facebook and Periscope audiences. Thank you to all of you that are joining me live. Remember, you catch me every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Then you can watch the replay on Facebook Live, Periscope, or on uh, YouTube. Also, uh, I'm here on the second Thursday of every month at 7 o'clock p.m. doing a series I call No More Genies. Okay? That means we're getting rid of our genie concept of God and we, we're rebuilding our concept of God with a biblical foundation, what the Bible actually says, and not, you know, any type of magical or genie-based concepts. All right? Okay, so I've definitely got a prophetic word for today, so we're going to pray and jump right in. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Father, for being able to come into your presence through your grace. Thank you, Lord, for the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Thank you that Jesus Christ is our peace and that we're reconciled to you by the blood of his cross. I just surrender to you right now, Father. I ask you to use me as a vessel. I thank you for the opportunity to be used by you. Oh God, and uh, just take over my mind, my brain, my lips, my my hands, my gestures, my words, my thoughts. Oh God, I surrender to the Holy Ghost so that what you want to be said will be said. Oh God, that you might be glorified in all things. And again, we thank you for an opportunity, oh God, to serve you in this lifetime, to invest into life eternal and to not waste our lives, but to do what we were created by you to do, to bring honor and glory to your name. So I thank you for it, I'm looking forward to what you have to say and how you move. In Jesus' name we pray and we give you all the thanks and all the glory. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Today's prophetic word is one word, and that word is mantles. Okay? That word is mantles. Now, what is a mantle? In the natural, a mantle is a loose, sleeveless cloak or shawl, something you can wrap, wrap around you, uh, but metaphorically and spiritually, a mantle is an important role or responsibility that passes from one person to another. Okay? So again, that's what a mantle is in the natural, a sleeveless cloak or shawl. But in uh, metaphorically and also in the spirit, a mantle is an important role or responsibility that passes from one person to another. And let's look at our scripture reference for today. A script, scripture reference for today is a very familiar passage of scripture for you Bible uh, readers. We're going to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. And this is a pan, uh, the passing of the mantle from Elisha to Elijah. But we're going to dig out some nuggets from the scripture and show you what the Lord is saying to us today. Okay? So we're going to look at 2 Kings, the book of 2 Kings chapter 2. And we're going to start at verse... Uh, nine. Okay, I'm going to start at verse 9. Here we go. Oh, I'm reading out of the uh, King James Version, by the way. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing, nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Ooh, Lord, there's a lot to unpack in there, but again, I want to stay focused on what it is that the Lord wants to say, okay? Several principles that I want to glean. The first thing I want to glean is, I'll say on the encouragement side, is that you're supposed to pass what you know on, okay? This may be for those of you that are older, this may be for those of you that are retiring, but it's also for those of you that are looking to inherit a mantle, 
those of you that are looking to take something over, those of you that are looking to follow in the footsteps of anyone that's gone before you, you're supposed to pass on what you know. You're supposed to pass on what you've learned. You're supposed to pass on what you've built. Uh, but there's a few challenges and problems. But uh, anyway, the first part is an encouragement. On the encouragement side, uh, I want you to understand that you're not supposed to leave this earth and not pass on what you know. That is huge. If you don't pass on what you know, that means, that means each generation has to start all the way over and they have to fight fights against the devil that you could have taught them how to win. And they have to fight fights against their own flesh that you could have taught them how to win. And there's experiences in life that they could have avoided, negative experiences, because you could have taught them how to win. Because that's the benefit of living a while. You learn some things, at least you're supposed to, you learn some things after you've been living for a while. But if you don't ever pass on what you know, and you leave here without passing on what you know, okay, that is a sin and a shame and a tragedy. It's one of the reasons I do these broadcasts, because 100 years after I'm dead, somebody's going to be able to tune in to something I recorded, and God can speak to them through it, okay? That's the, the thing about God, is you never know how God's going to speak to you. God can use something completely innocuous. God can use something, because I've listened to a lot of old recordings and watched a lot of old videos from prophets and saints that have gone on before, and you never know how God is going to move and how he's going to work. And sometimes you say things prophetically that aren't even going to come to pass in your generation, in your life. Therefore, the next generation, somebody's going to see it and hear it later and be blessed by it. You never know. The thing to do is always be sure that in some kind of way you pass on what you know. In today's modern society, we absolutely have no excuse. Okay, if you want to go back to the old days of camcorders, if you want to go all the way back to the beginning of recording technology, both audio and video in the 20th century, they had a certain level of tech. Okay, they did the best they could with what we had. But now, where we have these pixelated cameras on our phones, okay, we have absolutely no excuse to not capture record and sometimes even codify what God has given us to pass on to the next generation. And why in the world would we want to send people out there to fight the devil when we haven't equipped them or we haven't prepared them or we haven't given them the tools that they need, the, the, the years of our experience, the benefit of our experience. See, you're supposed to pass on what you know. That's on the encouragement side. Then on the challenge side, I want you to understand that Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou has asked a hard, a hard thing. Okay, first of all, <coughs> if you're going to ask for twice the anointing of somebody to be on your life, then you're also going to have twice the burdens, twice the challenges, twice the enemies, twice the requirements, twice the responsibility, Twice the impact, twice everything. You can't just get the double portion of the anointing or the blessing. And, and I've discovered there's a lot of people around here nowadays who think that they can just get the anointing. They can just get the benefits. They can just walk into something and get the full benefit of that thing. But if you want a double portion of somebody's anointing, you better check and be sure who what you're asking for. You better be che check and be sure that you know who you're talking to. Because you don't know what they've been through to get that mantle. Okay? The way it works in the kingdom of God is God takes you from faith to faith and glory to glory. But you have to climb the mountain of God. It doesn't happen all at once. And every time God calls you to a new level, there is a new devil. Okay, there's something new you have to fight as you grow up the mountain of God in life. And whenever you see somebody and you think they're anointed, and whenever you see somebody and you think that, you know, I want that, you better learn their backstory. You got to do like Elisha and spend some time with them. Elisha spent some time with Elijah. You got you to hang with them and find out what they've been through. Find out what that man will cost him. Okay, because I guarantee you it wasn't free. It was not free. And so this is for anything, for business, for family, for ministry. If you admire your father and you want to get a double portion of his spirit and you want to carry on, you better ask your dad about his backstory. You better ask your dad what it cost him. We just had Father's Day. You better ask your dad what it cost him to be your dad, what it cost him to build whatever it is he built, what it cost him to go through what he went through. 
Okay, so that's kind of on the, the warning side. The encouragement side is you're supposed to pass on what you know. But the warning side is that if you want a double portion, you want twice as much of somebody's anointing, you're not just going to get the anointing. <laughs> you're going to get twice as much trouble, twice as many enemies, twice as much responsibility, twice as many trials. Okay, all that's going to come if you get the mantle. Okay, and then Elijah said to Elisha, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Now, my son said something to me very interesting this week, and I kind of want to pick up and key in on what he said, but I want to give him credit for what he said. He said that the Lord told him, do, you know, does, does, does that sound like that's a hard thing for God? Is it a hard thing for God to do? And that answer is no, absolutely not. He meant that it was going to be hard on Elisha. Okay, that's the revelation my son shared with me. He said that it's going to be hard on Elisha, but why is it hard on you? Why is it hard when you ask for a double portion? Because of what I said before. Because you've got all that other stuff. You inherit everything that comes along with that mantle. For example, people have been saying for years, they've been asking, who's going to be the next Jesse Jackson? People have been asking for years, who's going to be the next Dr. Martin Luther King? People uh, said that Bishop Jakes was going to be the next Billy Graham, and now people are saying, who's going to be the next Bishop T.D. Jakes? Well, I'll stop by to tell you that if you want those mantles, you're going to have to take everything that comes along with them. Remember when they asked Jesus, the sons of thunder, uh, James and John, their mom was there, and Jesus just told them he was going to die. And she asked, and they asked, that when the Lord came into his kingdom, and they could sit on his right hand, and on his left, what was the Lord's response to that? <clears throat> the Lord said, you don't know what you're asking. Okay? You know not what you ask. You don't know what you're asking me to sit on my right hand or my left. And then the Lord said, are you able to be baptized with the baptism that I'm going to be baptized with? Okay? There's your key and there's your clue. The Lord said, if you want uh, to sit on the Lord's right hand and left hand, you want to sit on Jesus, you know, you want to be up close, you want to be all that with Jesus, you're going to have to be baptized with the baptism that the Lord was baptized with. And what was that? It was being arrested, it was being beaten, it was being betrayed by someone that he called a friend, it was a painful, gruesome death on a cross in, in public. And that's exactly how all of the disciples died except Apostle John. Apostle John lived long and wrote the book of Revelation after the age of 90 and uh, died on the island of Patmos, okay? But all the other disciples, the followers of Jesus, they died like he did. Peter asked to be crucified upside down because he felt like he wasn't worthy to be crucified right side up like the Lord was, so that's why one of the symbols for Peter is an upside down cross. That's where that comes from. They all got crucified, that's my point, <laughs> You want, you want a crown like Jesus got? You want a throne like Jesus got? You want to sit on his right hand or his left? Then you're going to have to go through what he went through. You're going to have to pay the same price he did. And that's what I'm trying to get you to see because a lot of people today are what I call spiritually ambitious. They want big churches. They want big ministries. They want multi-thousand member congregations. They want to be famous. They want to do a whole bunch of things. But if that's what you want, and you're, you're studying underneath someone that already has all that, and you think you want a double portion of their anointing, and you think you want a double portion of the spirit that's on them, you're not just going to get the parts that you like. One more time. You're not just going to get the parts that you like. You're going to get everything that comes along with that mantle. Okay? So I'm not saying don't ask. And I'm not saying don't be spiritually ambitious. I'm saying you better do your homework and understand how mantles work. And you better do your homework on that person so that you can understand what they've been through and the price they've had to pay in their lives to get to wherever it is that they are. But because, again, I guarantee you, it wasn't free. Okay? All right, moving on to verse 11. And it came to pass, as they still went on, and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Now, there are many, many sermons been preached on that, many lessons that can be gleaned from that. 
But the thing that I want to say in this broadcast is you don't know how you're going to separate from someone. Okay, now they both knew that Elijah was leaving that day. Okay, when you read earlier in the story, uh, they both knew. Elijah knew he was leaving that day, and Elisha knew it too, but you don't know how. You don't know how you're going to be separated from someone, and sometimes you don't know when you're going to be separated from them. Okay? And so uh, the lesson there is not to take anything for granted. Okay? Spend time with that person, you know, uh, study underneath them, learn everything that you need to learn, but you have no idea when or how the separation is going to come. Okay? All right? And then going on to verse 12. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father the chariot of Israel and the horses thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. That was a sign of mourning. That was Elisha acknowledging that Elijah was gone and he wasn't coming back. Okay? And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Verse 14. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Now, what's the lesson there? The lesson there is that if you think you have inherited the mantle, if you think that that mantle has passed on to you, you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to test it. You're going to have test, to test it and be sure that you did get it and be sure that it's working for you. What do I mean by that? I mean, for example... I want you to notice that the sons and the daughters, many times of famous people, don't necessarily inherit their mantle. They don't necessarily inherit their talent. There's a lot of people that have children that are super, super, super talented in what they do, but their children did not necessarily get that talent, or they not, did not necessarily get that mantle. Meaning that whatever it is the father or the mother did, the children might not have an open door in the spirit to do that same thing, or they might not have the same anointing or same grace or same skill or talent to do that thing. And then some people do. I just talked to a friend of mine this week. Uh, I used to be her choir director. She has the mantle of her mother. She doesn't just sing. She sings just like her mother. And when I mean she sings just like her mother, I mean if you closed your eyes and you didn't know that it was the daughter, you would swear it was the mama. That's how heavily that mantle fell on her. She sounds like her, she sings like her, and the anointing of God fills the room when she opens her mouth and sings. She did not just get the talent, she got the mantle. You understand? So, when you do get a mantle, if you think you got a mantle, you better test it. You better test it. Remember that when it was time to anoint the next king of Israel, uh, God sent Samuel to the house of Jesse, and Jesse called out all the sons. And even one time Samuel said, surely the Lord's anointing is before him. He looked at uh, one of Jesse's sons, and he said, that's got to be him. And God said, nope. So he got to the end of the sons, and Samuel said, Jesse, do you have any more sons? And Jesse was like, well, uh, I got this other one who's out there with the sheep, and he's out there fighting lions and bears with his bare hands. And he also writes music, so he's kind of a weird kid. And Samuel said, call him. And when David came up, God said, that's him. And David got the mantle, the anointing oil of the king. Okay? You better be sure that the Lord's anointed you. You better be sure that God has given you the mantle. You better be sure you've got it. You don't have a mantle just because mama and them said that you got it. And just because you look like your father or look like your mother does not mean you have their mantle. So, if you think you've got the mantle then you better test it, and you better sure, be sure that it works for you. That's what Elijah did. That's the first thing he did. He picked a mantle up and said, where's the Lord God of Elijah? And smote the waters, and then the waters parted, just like they did for Elijah. And that's how Elisha knew, yes, I do have this mantle that I asked for from my mentor. Okay? You better test it. You better test it to be sure that you have it. Okay, I feel a prophetic word coming, so let me release it. For behold, my people, the days come and even now are where many of you will begin to pass on what you have learned. You will begin to mentor. You will begin to develop others. You will begin to breathe your spirit out upon those that know you. Uh, do not be afraid of this and do not withhold any of the good things I've put inside of you. But teach others, bless others, pour yourself out. 
pour your life into those that follow, that I might raise up a new generation to carry on the work after you're gone, says the Spirit of the living God. Wow. Just wow. Wow, 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 wow. So the Holy Ghost is saying that we're in a time now where people that, that know something or have something to share are going to begin to pass that on. Okay, you're going to begin to pass on your anointing. You're going to begin to pass on what you know. Uh, now, many times that can be done by the laying on of hands. I'll have to explain that in a further video, but you can pass on your anointing and you can pass on your spirit by the laying on of hands. Sometimes people breathe on you. You can pass it on by breathing on because Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Sometimes it can come by spending time with the person. Sometimes you, you can mentor them and train them because you spend so much time with them that they have just begun to drink of your spirit, okay? But the Lord said we're in a time now where we're going to begin to pass on what we've learned and pass on what we know, okay? And it's very, very important for those of you that have mantles to pass on. There is an interesting and unfortunate end to this story because for those of you that are not familiar with the story of Elisha, the one who got the mantle of Elijah, when he died, he didn't really pass his mantle on to anybody. But Elisha had so much anointing in his bones that when he died, they put his corpse in the ground, and it was by a battlefield, and a wounded soldier died and fell over on the grave of Elisha. And there was so much anointing in Elisha's bone, bones that that dead soldier came back to life. I kid you not. That's how Elisha went out. But he didn't do for Gehazi, but he ended up cursing Gehazi because Gehazi was, was, uh, was uh, more interested in getting rich and stuff like that. So he ended up, Elisha cursed Gehazi with the uh, 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 leprosy of Naaman. But anyway, Elisha uh, ended up going out that way. And uh, hey man, hey. Hey there, Virginia. And uh, ended up going out that way and didn't really pass on his mantle to anyone else. And you don't want to go in the ground with all that anointing in your bones and you never mentioned anyone. You never passed on your mantle. You never uh, taught what you knew. You never poured yourself out into anyone. So the Holy Ghost just gave us a prophetic word and says that that's exactly what we need to do. So... I'm looking forward to that. I'm already doing that. I, I work with authors. You know, uh, I have children, uh, but not just your biological children. There's also going to be your spiritual children. And um, you want to pray for young people. You want to be able to ask the Holy Ghost to discern who they are. Because what you want to do is find out your destiny as early as possible in your life. You don't want to stumble around and burn up decades out of your life not knowing who you are and not knowing what you're supposed to do. You can get that from a prophet. If you know someone that has the mantle of a prophet or walks in the office of a prophet, if you want to know your destiny and future, you can ask them, and they can go in the Spirit, go in the Holy Ghost and tell you. That's one of the benefits of being around a prophet and in the prophetic. You do not have to waste your life trying to figure out who you are. You can ask a prophet, and they can give you a revelation, and you can get started. You can go to school for the right thing. You can live in the right city. You can go to the right church. You can have the right job. You don't have to wait no 40 years to figure all that out. You can figure all that out as a child. Solomon had that as a child. Daniel had that as a child. Joseph had that as a teenager. King Josiah had that as a child. You ain't got to live no 40 or 50 years to figure it out. Okay? That's one of the benefits of having a prophet in your life. One of the benefits of being around a prophet. So that's what I mean, those of you that are mentoring, and definitely those of you that are prophetic. It's time to start passing on what you know. Because God wants to raise up a new generation to carry on the work after the old generation goes away. And just like your parents might be gone, and you're carrying on some of what they did, and you're carrying some of their mantle. Um, I know, for example, in my family, I know one of my sisters is carrying part of my mother's mantle. Okay, because both my mother and my father were prophetic. So and so was my grandmother. My father's mother was prophetic. So that's all in my family. So I know one of my sisters is carrying that on. I'm carrying that on and pass it on to my son. And I'm watching my son learn how to prophesy. And I'm watching my son learn how to discern things in the spirit. And I'm so happy about that. And I could be 
prouder. What's my ministry? Okay. All right, hold on. Let me go in the spirit and let me ask the Lord for a word, Sally. Okay, so the Holy Ghost is telling me that a lot of what you have is pastoral, which means you'll have a shepherd's heart. A lot of what you have is loving people. A lot of what you have is connective and connecting with other people and blessing them and encouraging them and loving them and making them feel wanted like they're a part of the body. And God has put a lot of words in your mouth that are uh, uh, powerful in terms of encouraging others in terms of building others up, uh, I see you smiling a lot. I see you sharing your smile so that other people, because, you know, whenever you share a smile, other people have to smile right back because smiles are contagious. And I see God using you as someone that's really dynamic with a lot of energy to bless other people. But it's really a shepherd's heart. It's really someone that, that knows how to love others and knows how to um, uh, bless them and encourage them. Uh, so, you know, I believe that's what you're already doing, but that's definitely a thing you want to do. Uh, yeah, that's definitely what you want to do, and you want to stay in that flow, because other people are encouraged by your life and by your smile and by your, your words. So don't forget to begin to mentor others as well. Begin to teach other people what you know. You know, one of the things that can happen if you've walked with the Lord for a long time is you can begin to take your level of knowledge for granted. I've seen that over and over and over and over and over again. If you've been in the Word for a long time, or you've been in church, um, amen, God bless, and you've been in church a long time, or you've known the Lord for a long time, you can begin to take your level of knowledge for granted, and you can forget how much you actually know. You know how to do evangelism. You know how to lead people to Christ. Maybe you know how to do street ministry. You know how to organize street teams. Maybe you know how to speak in tongues. You've developed a prayer language. Maybe you know how to intercede. You spend hours and hours in the intercession. Maybe you know how to prophesy. And you prophesy, we all prophesy in many different ways, those that flow in the prophetic. Maybe you have uh, a pastoral calling and you know how to love people. And you know how to bring people from where they are to where God wants them to be. Maybe you know how to exegete scripture. Maybe you've memorized so many passages of the Bible. There's just so much that you know if you've been in the kingdom a while. If you've been in the kingdom for a while and you've been walking with God for a while, don't take your level of knowledge for granted. Because you know more than you think you do. And there are other people that need to know that. There's other generations. There's other young people coming up that don't know what you know. And they need to know what you know. So don't take what you know for granted. Because I found out there are some people that don't even know how to lead other people to Christ. Like if somebody walked up to you and said, you know, I know that you're a Christian and I want to be saved. I want to accept Jesus. What do I do? I found out there's some people that don't know. So let me show you right quick. The way to lead people to Christ is ABC. Okay? It's as simple as ABC. A, admit that you're a sinner. B, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God sent from heaven to die on the cross for your sins and was raised again the third day. And C, confess it with your mouth. So A, admit you're a sinner. B, believe on Jesus. C, confess with your mouth. That's how you lead somebody to Christ. It's just that simple. Now, demonology, deliverance, is different. Because sometimes, after you get born again, you need deliverance. You need unclean spirits cast out of your life. So that's a whole other thing. I don't have time to walk you through all that. But that's another area of knowledge. But uh, my pastor, John Eckhart, has taught that for years. And he's trained countless people to work in deliverance. And we have de deliverance workers in our church every week because sometimes you need unclean spirits cast out of you. Some stuff that you've been dealing with, you think it's just a natural thing or a normal thing. It's not. It's the devil. And you need to cast out of you. Okay? And then uh, uh, a prayer language is a separate thing. Uh, prophetics is another thing. And then getting filled with the Holy Ghost. I was in a situation a couple months ago and uh, we were prophesying and some of the ladies in the group I was working with told me that this one girl had never been filled with the Holy Ghost and she didn't know how. So I showed her how to get filled with the Holy Ghost on the spot, okay? And a whole lot of people I've discovered have a lot of different ideas about what that means, but that's why I, I stick with what the Word says, okay? And so I showed her how to get filled with the Holy Ghost. She got filled with the Holy Ghost on the spot and started prophesying to the point where she got overwhelmed. And she was like, whoa, whoa, I didn't know all this. I, I hadn't seen all this before. And, 
you know, and, and she was starting to see in the spirit, and she was starting to get that prophetic flow going, and she was like, whoa, because she got filled with the Holy Ghost on the spot, because I knew how to show her how to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay? Amen. And so, um, so uh, again, like I said, I don't want you to underestimate the amount of knowledge that you have. Don't downplay it. Sometimes what we say is, if I'm not like my pastor, or if I'm not like my prophet, or if I'm not like my bishop, then I don't have anything to offer. That is incorrect. You don't have to be on the level of your pastor or your prophet or your bishop to have something to offer. What you do is you tell what God has done for you. You offer what God has given to you. See, the word minister coming out of the Greek, it means to serve. It means to serve. That's what the English word minister means to serve in the Greek. And when we use the word minister, many times we mean like a fancy collar or a fancy robe or a fancy cane because I've seen ministers with scepters or a fancy hat or a big Thompson chain Bible or a title. I want to remind you that the Lord Jesus Christ, the maker of heaven and earth, the one that died on the cross for the sins of humanity, the living son of God, and got on his hands and his knees and washed his disciples' feet. That still just blows my mind. Just, that just, just, just my whole mind just explodes when I think about God in the flesh <laughs> getting a bucket of water and some scrub brushes and some towels and washing the feet of his friend. I, ooh, Lord. See, because the Lord is humble. The Lord doesn't have any pride. But the point I'm trying to make is that if the Lord did that, my motto is, if it's good enough for God, it's good enough for me. And what I mean by that is, a lot of people have limited what they can do because when you hear the word minister, you think pastor or big fancy title or someone that stands in the church, and that's not what it means. There's nothing wrong with being called a minister, but the word minister actually means to serve. It means to serve. That means whatever your life story has been. You may not have a life story that revolves around church. And a lot of people think what I just said is sacrilege and blasphemy. But you may not have a life story that revolves around church. Maybe God brought you from a whole different situation. Tell that story. That's what you're supposed to tell. Because God needs a witness and God needs a representative in every single walk of life. Every single place that people are, God needs somebody to open their mouth and be a witness. I mean, if you're in nursing, if you're in education, if you're in the financial industry, if you're in entertainment, if you're in athletics, if you're in sports, if you're in politics, there is no sphere where people are that God doesn't need a witness. That's what I mean when I say, tell your story. Stop saying that if I'm not like Bishop Jakes, if I'm not like John Eckhart, if I'm not like Bill Winston, if I'm not like Joel Osteen, if I'm not like them, then I don't have anything offered. That's not the truth. And stop saying that because I don't have an official title or maybe I haven't been ordained or whatever it is in your head that makes you think you don't have anything to offer just because you're not those people are on that level. That's incorrect. Okay? So that's why the Holy Ghost is saying we're, the time is coming, yea, now is, well, we're going to have to take what we know, whatever that is, and start pouring it into someone, someone else, pouring it into the next generation. You can't assume that they know what you know. And you may be downplaying how much you know. You might be downplaying it altogether. So that's what I mean when I say we want to listen to the Holy Ghost. And like I tell you every week, there's nothing that I'm saying to do that I am not doing. Okay? And um, I'm doing exactly what it is that I'm saying with you. And I'm super excited about it. But because I'm excited to see these young authors come up. I'm, so, I'm excited to see uh, what happens when their mind expands. And uh, our, my pastor was preaching this morning about expanding the mind and retraining the brain. And about how it's not easy, but it can be done. How you can think differently and your brain chemistry changes. And the whole scope of your thoughts change. And I'm excited about pouring that into young people and young authors and people that are learning how to write and young prophets. Because let me tell you something about being a young prophet. Let me tell you something. Being a young prophet is overwhelming. And just like when God first calls you, like Samuel, 
God told Samuel's mama, Hannah, you're going to have to take that boy to the house of Eli and let him grow up underneath the mantle of a prophet. Let him grow up in the house of God. So Hannah had to give her son up and let Samuel grow up uh, in the house of God under Eli. The first time God called Samuel, Samuel woke up and went and said, Eli, did you call me? And Eli said, no, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. Samuel went back to sleep, and he heard something say, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up again and said, Eli, did you call me? And Eli said, no, son, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. Third time, Samuel, Samuel. And then Eli said, oh, it's the Lord. Samuel didn't know that was God talking to him. Okay? When he first started out. Being a young prophet can be overwhelming. You see it and hear it in the spirit, and you see a bunch of stuff that you might not be able to discern yet. And also, when that mantle and that anointing is on you, the devil is coming after you. The devil came after your mom. Because when you are an apostle or a prophet, that anointing is on you in the womb. You mark before you're born. God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, before I formed thee in the womb, I ordained thee a prophet to the nations. So before your mother ever gets pregnant with you, God already decided that you were going to be an apostle or prophet. And that anointing, that mantle is on you. When your mother is pregnant with you, that means the devil can see it. Because remember that the devil has known God longer than we have. And the devil will come after your mom when she's pregnant with you. That's what it's like being an apostle or an apostle or a prophet. Okay? The devil can hit your mom before you ever even come out of the womb. The devil can persecute you from a child and people will hate you and you won't know why they hate you. You didn't do anything. That's the spirit in them. That's the carnal spirit of them. That's the devil in them reacting to that prophetic anointing in you because the devil cannot stand the prophetic because the prophetic is designed to open eyes. The prophetic is designed to dispel darkness. And when you call out demons, they're going to run like roaches when the light come on. Okay? That's who you are as a prophet. And that's how you move through the spirit and the devil can't stand that because he's going to get exposed when the prophets show up, but you eight years old with all that on you, you don't have any idea. You don't know why people react to you the way that they do, okay? You don't know why all this judgment keeps coming out your mouth, okay? All these accurate words keep coming out your mouth. You're seeing all this stuff in the, mirror, in the spirit, and you get attacked in the spirit too. You're eight years old. So being a young prophet is overwhelming, and they need... Uh, older prophet, they need a mentor, they need someone that is familiar with the spirit, that's mature and seasoned in the kingdom, that knows what they're doing, to come in their life and say, this is what's going on. You're not crazy. You're not crazy. You're just prophetic and you've tapped into the spirit and the enemy knows that you're prophetic and he's trying to throw you off. He's trying to get you messed up. Don't you know that that is why some people get into witchcraft and mediums? They were supposed to manifest in the kingdom of God. They were supposed to be prophetic and they took a wrong turn or they got around the wrong people and then they ended up manifesting in the kingdom of darkness. Then now all of a sudden they're, they're casting spells and all of a sudden they're using occult-based stuff because they were seeing it in the spirit when they were young and they didn't have anyone come in their lives and say, that's a gift from God, but we need to bring it under the authority of Jesus Christ and you need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit and you need to be strong in the word of God so then God can use you to manifest in his kingdom. So they started seeing in the spirit. They started hearing stuff. They started being able to discern stuff. And a whole bunch of stuff started happening. And the next thing you know, the devil sent somebody in their life and pulled them away from knowing Jesus. And now they're manifesting in the kingdom of darkness. And they're doing, using all kind of occult stuff and doing everything but what they should be doing. That's right. That's right. That's happened to quite a few people. Or quite a few people, some famous people too, I'm not going to call their names, but some famous people too, um, when they wrote their memoirs and told their story, and some famous people before they died, they said, I knew I had a call of God on my life, but I don't want to do it. And some of them ended up dying early. Do you know why? Because in some cases, because I can't speak to every case, in some cases, if you are out there outside of the will of God and you're not covered by the blood and covered by the word of God and covered by Jesus' name and speaking in tongues and armoring up and staying close to the saints and getting somebody to intercede for you, then if you're out there uncovered, you end up sometimes like Samson. You're living such a carnal, worldly lifestyle that the Lord just steps back from you and the anointing just lifts off you. Okay? And then you ended up dying early. 
That's not true in every case, but it's true in some cases because, again, there's some memoirs of famous people that said, I knew that God called me. I knew that God called me when I was a child, but I don't want to do it. See, so somebody needs to be a place to come in their life and say, we're going to get you in the call of God. We're going to get you in the will of God. We're going to get you into uh, your destiny and to be sure that you can walk in uh, the Spirit of God and uh, walk in what it is you're supposed to do. Okay, Vanita? All right, all right hold on. Let me uh, go in the Spirit, and I'll talk about that. All right, Vanita, what God is saying to you is that you are graduating. You are moving to the next level, and God is trusting you with more things. But the problems that you're having is that there's going to be a shakeup. There's going to be a shakeup in your life around you. And um, uh, like things are, are, are breaking up, like breaking up foul ground, but it's going to be breaking up some relationships, uh, breaking up of some uh, stuff that you're used to. It's going to be new stuff coming in that you haven't seen before because God is pulling you up. He's trusting you with more. But whenever God does that, that means you're going to have to let go of some stuff that was. You're going to have to let go of some things. Well, can't do that now. You're going to have to let go of some things that used to be. And that's why you're struggling. That's why it's been such a fight. That's why it's been so many things going on in your life. Hold on. I think I missed somebody. Okay. All right. And that's... Uh, Wanda, Wanda, uh, I can't see, I uh, can't see your name right, okay, uh, so yeah, so let me go in the spirit for you, because that was for Vanita, uh, okay, all right, what God is saying for you uh, is that Mm. I see a river of water flowing in your life. I see a river of water. And what that means is that God is filling you with the Spirit. God is giving you strong anointing. God is giving you uh, uh, new revelations. God is giving you a new flow. Okay? That's what water represents in the Spirit is a new flow. And God wants you to continue to walk into that flow. But just like I was telling Vanita before... There's going to be some people that don't like the fact that you're walking in that new flow. There's going to be some people who don't like the fact that uh, there's some new revelations coming out of heaven from God to you. But you're going to have to be strong and you're going to have to walk in that flow. You're going to have to walk in and you're going to have to stay with it. You're going to have to let God continue to bless your life. Okay? All right. I'm going to have to read all these comments because I can't see some of them. Some of them are hidden on the screen, and some of them say read more, but the screen is not printing them all out. So that's why I, I'm not seeing everything that you're saying to me, but I'm praying for those that I do see. So I'm going to go on my Facebook after this is over, and then I'll type in some answers uh, if I didn't answer you while I'm uh, prophesying live. So I'm not ignoring you, but I just can't see all the comments as they're scrolling. Okay? So anyway, so I'm going to wrap up. But uh, thank you so much for watching live, tuning in live. I want to do this some more, so uh, hopefully I'll ask the Lord if I can do this some more next week because I know that there's quite a few people that need a word from the Lord about their destiny. And there's quite a few people that need a word from the Lord about getting things in line. And so I want to continue to do that. But also we need to walk in the word that the Holy Ghost gave today about mentoring and about passing on that mantle, about be sure that we pour in to... Uh, to the people, the generation that's coming behind us, okay? All right, God bless. Again, if I didn't get to your comment live, I can't see all of them as they scroll. It's a very small window actually on my screen, and then some of them are, need to be expanded, and I can't read the whole thing. So I'm going to go in the comments after I get through and uh, answer you there, okay? So God bless. Thank you so much for tuning in live. Uh, let me see if there's anything else the Holy Ghost wants me to say in terms of deliverance, finances, healing. Nope. Okay, we're good. So, yeah. So, praise God. I'm excited about that word. And uh, I'm excited about moving forward. I'm excited about pointing in other people's lives. 
So God bless you. I will see you again same time next week, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And don't forget to join me on the second Thursday in July, 7 o'clock p.m. for No More Genies. Okay? And again, if you have any more questions, just post them either on my Twitter or on my Facebook Live, and I'll get to them right away. Okay? Thank you, and God bless, and have a great week.